Hey there guys, so this is the final in the Transporter trilogy that I'm going to review. I reviewed the other two movies, I'll leave a link in the description section to my movie review series. You can check those out if you want to, I'd appreciate it. And um, yeah, this is the third movie I figured since I reviewed them, might as well finish the series. So yeah, the Transporter 3 <laughs> from 2008, directed by Olivier Megaton, once again starring Jason Statham. Now... For those of you who know who Olivier Megaton is as a director, you'll know that he has a pretty bad reputation when it comes to directing action movies. His reputation is not great. He's just one of these guys who, every single movie that I've seen of his, which has been an action movie directed by him, they ha they seem to have all of the problems that modern day action movies have. They seem to have an overabundance of shaky cam, quick cuts, um, close-up shots, poorly ed ed edited action sequences, and it's no different here. I like the first two Transporter movies. I think the first one is really good. It's my favourite Jason Statham movie. The second one wasn't great, but it was a bit of a dumb, you know, switch-your-brain-off action movie that was dumb and fun, and I could have fun with it. There was some decent stunt work and whatnot. Yeah, it was dumb, but I enjoyed it. You know, it was a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, this movie... The third movie in the series, directed by Olivia Megaton, is definitely the worst of the series. And it's definitely, if I had a choice to watch either one of them, this or the other two, I definitely would not choose this. I would choose the first one over this, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, like I said, Olivia Megaton, I don't like his style of action directing. I mean, he also directed Taken 2 and Taken 3, and whereas I enjoyed the first Taken... Taken 2 and Taken 3, the action sequences, despite the, you know, a good acting performance from Liam Neeson, the action sequences were just what ruined those movies, in my opinion, and it's the same here. I like Jason Statham's character in this movie, and I'm not even a big fan of Jason Statham, you know, I, I don't like a lot of his movies, you know, but as I mentioned in my review for The Transporter 1, I like his character in this movie, and I like the way he portrays him, and I like his action sequences, but in this movie... His acting performance and how likeable the character is can't save this movie from its many faults and its many um, shortcomings. Like, for example, um, the love interest that they have in this movie is this Ukrainian chick. I don't know the actress's name. I can't remember. But she was absolutely dreadful. Absolute annoyance. She didn't need to be in the movie. She was terrible. Um, she, you know, she's in so many scenes of the movie where I'm just like, oh, just get her out of there, man. Every line of dialogue from her was annoying. The way that she acts in the movie, like, they're in this very serious situation where Jason Statham is basically having to drive her around and, you know, keep her out of trouble because she's being used as, as a bargaining chip. She's kind of being held to ransom without spoiling too much of the plot. And the whole movie, she just annoys the shit out of him. I mean, she she takes drugs, you know, and, and, and she's partying, she's getting drunk in the back of his car and just being a cow the whole time, distracting him from his job, making, you know, sexual jokes and all that, you know, trying to hit on him. There's even a real fucked up scene in this movie where she kind of, she kind of, I don't know if I can call it rape, but it was sort of on the borderline of rape, where... She goes into this this like um like this stop this um gas station with a little shop. She goes in. She pulls her pants down and takes a shit on the floor. You don't actually see her taking a shit, but it's implied that she's taking a shit. And without like doing anything, like without wiping her ass, she comes out and then minutes later, she forces Jason Statham to take his clothes off. Like she she you know <laughs> takes something off him and then sort of blackmails him and says look if you don't take your clothes off you're not getting this back and he has to sort of strip tease in front of her and it's a real awkward scene and you could tell that Jason Statham as an actor was really awkward during that scene like the the, the directors and the producers were telling him to do it and you could tell he, he did not enjoy it um and, and then he has to fuck this girl like she forces him to fuck her while she, after she's just taken a shit minutes ago and I'm like this is just this is just wrong. Like, there's so much wrong with this movie, man. Like, <laughs> this movie is, yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, there's a lot of sequences like that. I really didn't like her character. She she didn't need to be there, man. Um, the villain played by Robert Nepper. I like Robert Nepper as an actor. He did it. He did a really good job as the villain. I must say, uh, he was one of the, the the positives of this movie. Um, I liked Robert Nepper. You know, he's a 
I remember him from the series Prison Break, where, you know, he played an absolute fucking psychopath in that series. If you guys have ever seen it, you know what I'm talking about. He was also in the movie Hitman, where he played one of the villains in that movie. And he's, he's been in a lot of movies. He was in the movie Hostage with Bruce Willis, which I like. So, yeah, Robert Nepp is a good, a good actor, a good character actor. He did a good job here, but he couldn't save this movie. Neither could Jason Statham. It's a poorly directed movie. It's a poorly edited movie. There's a couple of interesting action sequences, like the fight sequence on the train was okay towards the end, but it wasn't anything special. I've seen it done much better in other movies. This was just a pretty lame movie, and it was pretty unnecessary. But it's the ending to the Transporter trilogy, so I guess it's watchable. If you, I mean, I do own the movie. I bought the trilogy on DVD, so yeah, it is what it is. I give this movie a 4 out of 10, below average. Let me know what you guys think, and thanks for watching. God bless.